Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Wow, look at that. Old Macadac just got the plane off the ground here with Declan at Target Field without crashing it yet. Bow down to your new producer. <laughs> I'm still concerned that, that there might be problems at, at let's say, 30,000 feet. So I'm not going to get to How do I stop the ex- music? Yeah. Hold on. Let me see. If, oh, I might be able to plane? fade it. I think I can, can fade it. Can you land the plane? Watch me fade this. All right. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, that good. Fading? Oh, it's fading. Pretty good. Yeah, that's good. We're fading. Oh, yes. We, Thank yes, you, we are. everyone. Yes, Thank we are fading. Everyone. Yes. <laughs> Thor can tell us we are fading. <laughs> so welcome in. It's a Thor's Day here on Purple Daily. We got our guy, Thor Nystrom, from Fantasy Pros and from Betting Pros. And we're going to get into, so Thor has spent the last week putting together for you guys specifically, well, and for his A job, uh, Fantasy Pros and Betting Pros, a list of late in the draft offensive sleepers. Is it fair to say day three sleepers or could any of these guys, I mean, now that you're publishing this, they're all going to be day two sleepers. <laughs> Mr. Uh, draft stock. Most here. people on this list are definitely going day three. There's a couple that are, are going to go day two, but that I think should be going higher, but, but end of day two, no, no okay. round two guys, certainly no round one guys, most day three. Okay. We know how influential Thor is when it comes to putting putting names out there. JJ J. J. McCarthy. McCarthy's life. He really J. did. JJ McCarthy was like a schlep on the street corner. <laughs> Day three and all guy. of a sudden he's yeah. like, Oh my god, he's gonna be top five. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get started here on Purple Daily, we have a new partner on board, Judd. Let's tell the audience. You and I are both repping the hats here. here we today. are Northern Fire. Different baby. hats. Exactly right. Yes. And w- welcome aboard uh to our new friends. Northern Fire Grilling and Barbecue Supply. And now you're saying, hold on a second here. If you're watching this, you're seeing all, so many di- different things. You, you know why? Because Northern Fire, we're talking about the best barbecue playground in town. Let me go through some of the things that you are looking at right now. 70 different uh, gas grills, over 150 near and dear to Phil's heart. Oh, Dry God. rubs on the flavor wall. Oh, there's talk dirty. There's also, hold on, it gets better. There's also a sauce selection because there is a sauce wall, and that is only a start. Uh, They also are the only Twin Eagle dealer in the Twin Cities carrying luxury outdoor grill and equipment. Uh, There are also unique cuts of meats and seafood. Go to their website, check it out, northernfirebbq.com, or check out their location just north of Highway 62 on Shady Oak Road. If it involves barbecue... Northern Fire Grilling and Barbecue Supply, they will have it. It truly is a playground for any of you who love barbecue. We're working on our sort of stage setup at the draft party, too. And we're, I, I'm, I probably shouldn't even say this because if it doesn't come to fruition, then I just, whatever. But I got people's hopes up. We're looking to, to put potentially one of these awesome grills on stage and have like a hot take station. So when any of us has something brewing, well, I got a hot take. We go over to the hot take, the hot take desk. So. We'll see if that can come to fruition. But we got Thor in the house here. Let's get to it. I mean, let's just, we'll spend the first 15 minutes or so going through your list of some of your favorite offensive sleepers. Now, are these, these are just sleepers independent of what the Vikings, some the Vikings may or may not have interest in some of these guys. Like they could be looking for a receiver, but probably not an offensive tackle, right? So when we get to some of these guys that could make sense for the Vikings, shout that out specifically. But let's start with your quarterback. Who is your day three quarterback sleeper, Thor? Well, well, so this is the one guy that I put out that is probably going to go in day two, but it's going to be at the end of it. Uh, but okay. the quarterback class, once you get beyond day two, it starts to get a little bit hairy uh, down there. You, you're really taking chances on guys, or you're taking guys that have no ceiling whatsoever. So, so this is the only guy I thought that was viable that could be taken later on that could develop into an NFL starting quarterback. And that is Spencer Rattler from South Carolina. Wow. Uh, Spencer Rattler, I have uh, ranked QB six, one spot ahead of Bo Nix, who, you know, uh, well, I won't get into Bo Nix. But Spencer Rattler, we have seen this guy succeed at two different systems. First, Lincoln Riley's at Oklahoma. Of course, then there was, you know, he got displaced for Caleb Williams, which no shame in that. He's going to be the first pick in this draft. Then he goes to South Carolina, different system. Far worse supporting cast. And, of course, every week you were going against uh, better uh, athletes than, than your teammates around you in the SEC. 
a uh, short, aggressive pocket, pocket passer with a snappy arm. I love that he goes through his progressions. I love that he is good under pressure. Uh, he, he's one of those guys that can buy time. Uh, back in um, his first year starting, his first full season at Oklahoma when he started as a redshirt freshman, he had the highest uh, uh, out-of-structure grade uh, the PFF had had since Pat Mahomes. So there's you have different stuff, you know, in 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 that vein. When he went to South Carolina, they had a terrible offensive line. So the first year it didn't look as good in 2022, but the light came back on at the end of that season. He ripped up a whole bunch of good defenses: Clemson, Tennessee, I think Notre Dame in the bowl game. And then 2023 was a lot better in part because the coaching staff started to modulate things to help out his offensive line and and make sure that the defense couldn't pin their ears back. So that there was a little bit more quick hitting concepts and and different stuff like that. But Spencer Rattler was the number one quarterback in his class. First quarterback to ever sign would be a handpicked guy from Lincoln Riley out of high school when Lincoln was a head coach that went on to start for Lincoln Riley. I, I think that there's a lot of potential there, and I think he's going to go later than he should. So Spencer, Rattler. are we thinking? Are we thinking uh, probably day three? Then you, you said it might it might be day two, but if your projection is that he probably is going to go a bit after you think he should are we yeah. talking day three are we talking i, I, I would guess the latter round? the latter half at the end of round three or okay. he's going to go in round four you know basically it's like when does Penix and nicks go off the board i think most would have rattler at some point there but he sort of talked about his as this afterthought whereas i think he should be higher third round maybe even late second especially if you think that bo nix is a is a second round guy or god forbid a first round guy i, I think spencer rattler gives you more long-term ability you know and, and viability mm -hmm. as an nfl starter so okay i'm gonna ask you something sort of vikings related off this because i think if you had a if you pulled all vikings fans and said who do you want to be the vikings next quarterback who, who do you want them to draft the the biggest bubbles would be like the biggest percentages would be if this was a pie chart the, if it was judd's pie chart of who do you want to lead the vikings for the next you know eight to ten years Drake May might be the biggest bubble. I think you have you have probably driven the J.J. McCarthy bubble among our audience to be bigger than it would be. But there is a group of Vikings fan extremists out there, and we've heard from some of them. We've read a couple comments on Feedback Fridays that are enamored with Spencer Rattler. And by the way, when we do our mock draft simulation today on this show, we're going to mandate that we as the Vikings either stand pat at 11 or trade back. We're going to do it that way today. But for those of for, let's 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 just play out a scenario here hypothetically where four quarterbacks go off the board and the Vikings can't jump or won't jump. They don't want to give up their 2025 first round picks. Um, and and now you're in the mix for Penix, Knicks, and Rattler, and trying to figure out what do we do with our 11, our 23? Do we okay? Do we load up on non quarterback? I mean, is there a world where it makes sense? And people are going to kill me for asking this question. Is there a world where it makes sense for the Vikings to draft Spencer Rattler this year? Only if it's become cost prohibitive to make that trade up. Uh, if okay. you know, if, if the Broncos d do a truly YOLO thing and leverage them, they're basically blow up their draft class the next two years in addition to this one. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it doesn't become, you know, to the Cardinals or to the Chargers. And it is no longer cost viable for Quasi to do that. I, I think, yes, th then that would be the possibility. I wouldn't take Penix at 23. I'm not, I wouldn't kill it if it was the very end of the first round. I would prefer that at the top of the second. So if you could get a trade down, if, if that ended up being their guy, I, we've talked about how I have some questions about Penix's fit in KOC's offense. The throwing over the middle thing doesn't throw well on the mover when his feet are shuffling whatsoever. Um, but that's where you could do that. Uh, Spencer Rattler would be the guy if, if someone overdrafts Penix, someone wants to beat you on that. Rattler would then be my my fallback guy uh, at some point in the latter half of, of round three or even the top of round four because I I think he could absolutely drop there. Do you foresee him if if that takes place? Which God forbid, because the people at the Fillmore do not want like two days after or a day we'll, we'll, after. We'll, we'll, we'll go back on Saturday. We'll yeah, we'll be like, Saturday. hey, we're back at the Fillmore. So the special <laughs> Rattler. Um, if that were to take place, Thor, do you think that the Vikings would take Rattler? Do you think that they would just have Darnold start? And I, I guess I'm saying is is Rattler like a viable guy that 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 you think long term could be that solution, or is that more of a, for lack of a, be, a better comp, is it more of a Jaron Hall? You just sort of be taking a flyer, but you got really no clue. 
Um, cause it does feel like there is a world to Phil's point where like, I don't like it, but where Darnold could not only be the starting quarterback on opening day, but he could just be the starting quarterback for 2024. Yeah, I, I, I think that would be possible. And Rattler would be the only other guy, you know, once you get past Penix or some people would say next that, that you could come in and feel reasonably confident in that right. you have a developmental piece that could start is he, he's better than Jaron Hall objectively on 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 any measure and and sure. that's all with the passing um and one point I wanted to make about Rattler because you know obviously the thing happened at Oklahoma where then you know Caleb Williams who had just come in displays him in the middle of the season he transfers to South Carolina Rattler's game I I mentioned this he likes to be in the shotgun field spread and then he wants to buy just a little bit of time, allow those receivers to, to, to flower out their routes. That aspect of his game reminds me a bit of Bryce Young. There, there's a couple other quarterbacks. Caleb Williams is an extreme example of this, of, of scrambling around. But Spencer Rattler, more in the vein of a guy like Bryce Young, the, the pocket passer guy. La the past couple of years, I was talking about how at South Carolina, there was times where, where you know, he struggled, especially early in 2022. The one point I would make is both of those years at South Carolina, PFF graded their pass blocking of the offensive line sub 100 out in the FBS. They were a terrible pass blocking offensive line. The first 10 games of 2022, he had to acclimate his game, which at Oklahoma was the high wire act and scrambling around. And like I said, you know, outside of the pocket, under pressure, he, you know, evoked in terms of their charting, Pat Mahomes at Texas Tech. But he had to modulate his game a bit because there was so much immediate pressure. And, and then that adjustment didn't come till the end of 2022. And then, of course, he was better uh, this past season. Would he be a fit for KOC? KOC likes those timing concepts. What and, and Rattler, you know, again, he likes to extend a little bit. So that would be the one thing you'd have to jive there. But Rattler does attack the middle of the field and effectively. So that would certainly would be a fit. Okay. Let's go to wide receiver here. All right. So we're looking for the next Puka Nakua. No pressure. Give <laughs> us, give us, a, I know you have a, a small handful of day three wide receiver sleepers. And the Vikings, I think the number three receiver spot is sort of open for the taking here. Brandon Powell is in the mix there, but... They need a receiver, so give us three sleepers for potentially day three. I would definitely advocate the Vikings take a receiver in this class. You, obviously, you have the awesome starters, but you mentioned what it sort of looks like once you get beyond those top two guys. And this receiver class, to me, receiver uh, and then offensive tackle are the two most stacked position groups in this draft. And then quarterback, qualitatively, I, is the other one that I would put in the top three. But you can get value almost anywhere down the board at the receiver position. So it would be a good idea for the Vikings to delineate a pick to that. I, I got three guys for you. The first one is a guy who may slide into the end of day two, like at the end of round three, but is more likely going in round four. Former five-star recruit signed with Nick Saban at Alabama, but his career did not take off until he transferred down to UCF and played with Gus Malzahn, Javon Baker. He's a guy I've been pounding the table for. He reminds me a lot of a receiver in the last class I pounded the table for. Rishi Rice is my comp for him. Javon Baker, six foot one, 202 pounds, a 79th percentile athlete. Last year, downfield killer, and he's been a downfield killer the past couple of years at UCF. He had a 17.1 A dot. You guys, like, remember back Bo Nix at Auburn when he was really, really struggling before Bo Nix got to go to Oregon playing the Mickey Mouse offense? It was because <laughs> Bo Nix throwing downfield, you know, like Gus Malzahn's system, it's like run, you know, motion, motion, run, run, go up tempo, and then force the defense to come up and then take one-on-one -on -one shots, which is the thing that Bo Nix struggled, struggled with. But Javon Baker was deployed as that, that field stretcher. But in the instances where we got to see him shuttle the ball short, breaks tackles in the instances where we got to see him work in the intermediate again i'm not a big tenant of, of melzon's offense but he was extremely good at that catching balls outside of his frame on the move and a lot of balls outside of his frame because of the quarterback play at ucf the past couple of years and then he keeps trucking up field without losing any momentum again breaking the tackles uh he, he is a guy javon baker believes he and ardently believes he is the best wide receiver in this class he is one of those alpha type personalities uh, it, you'd probably evoke a guy like Stefan Diggs with, with that, a guy who fell down later on and then w the situation was good. Stefan Diggs took off. I, I think Javon Baker is a guy that could be like that too. I think it's going to get underdrafted. Wow, dude. Yeah. I mean, that's, and the Vikings have so many shots, so many bites at the apple that the fourth, fifth rounds, right? So he, you're saying with all those bites at the apple, the Vikings have, 
Javon Baker and then, and then the other guys you're going to name. I mean, that's kind of the sweet spot for the Vikings need to hit on a couple players this year in those rounds. For sure. Yeah. And this receiver class, uh, to me, of, of really interesting prospects, you're talking 23 or 24 deep. It's deep. Wow. Wow. Very, 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 wow. very deep. Like Javon Baker, I have uh, just outside of my top 10, but you know, on some other people's list, just because of how stacked it is, he's more down in the late teens or even, you know, at like 20. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I think you could try to jump the line a little bit for him. If indeed you were interested. Okay. So Baker, Give- Baker uh, at his best, like two years in wide receiver, what? I would say wide receiver too, because you have, first of all, the frame, you have the pedigree. Obviously, Nick Saban was attracted to him coming out. You know you have the downfield utility. That is his best thing. He has really good ball skills down there. He'll go up and get it. He'll pin people to his back, not jarred by contact. You know, some of those guys down the field, there will be a little bit of jockeying and and you'll get jarred from the back. He don't care at all. He's going to go up and get that ball. So you have the downfield thing which is going to force the safety back. And then the other stuff just sort of flowers off that, but I don't ever see his skill set becoming, you know, one of the top qualitative 20, 25 receivers in the NFL. Yeah, but but good. Out, outside of that group, he hits his ceiling. Okay. He could absolutely be the, the 40th or 45th. Yeah. Okay. okay. Give us a couple other wide receivers day three. So these are guys, go, now we're going to get deeper. Uh, one guy, if the Vikings wanted to take a slot receiver, obviously they've been in, uh, they were in 12 personnel with Oliver Hawkinson. Hawkinson out at the beginning of, of the season coming up. So it, they've made then go to the three wide receivers at least initially and then go back. So someone you could consider at a discounted price point that would be a slot guy and a slot guy only that I think is getting slept on is Jalen McMillan of Washington. And, and th- this one reminds me so much, this situation of last year. You guys remember the uh, out of Tennessee, we had Jalen Hyatt, who was forwarded at the beginning of the draft process of, as a first-round guy, which I, I always thought was ludicrous. And then we had Cedric Tillman. Cedric Tillman, whenever he was on the field with uh, Jalen Hyatt at Tennessee, was the guy that they were targeting and using yeah. as the number one guy. And then Hyatt would take a, a big step down. Uh, that it, it's the same thing this year, in my opinion, with Jalen McMillan, who would be Cedric Tillman in this example, and then Jalen Polk, who would be Jalen Hyatt. I think Jalen Polk is the guy who has been inflated only because Jalen McMillan got injured last year. Whenever those two were on the field together, Washington went to Jalen McMillan a lot more. In fact, in 2022, so you go with the, the season before last, Mm-hmm. Jalen McMillan and Roma Dunze were almost indistinguishable wow. as Washington's wide receiver one. Uh, McMillan had four more catches, two more touchdowns, and Dunze got 47 more he's yards. He's doing it again. Thor, oh, he's, he's doing it again. Oh, Jalen McMillan, Jalen he's, McMillan he's is doing agent, it, right? yes. Jalen McMillan. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. In fact, we have a live uh, audio feed from Jalen McMillan and his agents living room right now. <laughs> Second round. Let's go. <laughs> And then who's the third wide receiver on your list um, for this exercise? Anyway, yeah, the the third one, a guy we've talked about a lot, Luke McCaffrey. Luke McCaffrey. You Let's guys go. know exactly where Blood I'm going. Lines. Blood Six lines. Six foot two, two hundred pounds, ninety six percentile athlete, and he is a guy that can play both inside and outside, which he showed the last two years. And a lot of development left to go with him. He only started playing receiver two years ago. Prior to that, he was a, a ballyhooed uh, dual threat quarterback coming out of high school. Uh, and then he went to a couple of different power five schools, didn't work out, goes down to Rice, becomes a receiver. He has the athletic profile, obviously has the bloodlines, dominated Conference USA the past couple of years. And what was undersold about McCaffrey is his ability to win down the field. Uh, and and because the reason why is guy has v- very good hands, obviously, but extremely good concentration. Luke McCaffrey led this class by far in catches secured while his helmet got popped off because he took a huge (laughs) shot. And in fact, I think I saw more of that on his tape than all the other receiving tape I watched combined. Uh, Luke McCaffrey, 17 for 28 in contested situations last year. I mentioned the strong hands, only three drops on 120 targets in 2023. That was with bad quarterback play at Rice for a guy who was only playing receiver for the, the second season. I love this family. Love this man. I love this yeah. family. Okay, give me the, give me the bloodline family. Yes. Okay, it's Thor's day, and in actuality, it's reckless speculation. Thor's day. Wow. So I want to ask you a question directly tied to the position group and your statements about it, which I think are a thousand percent accurate. I want to ask you both a question: 
and it's going to be highly triggering and controversial. (laughs) So let's say the Vikings are in a position to make a trade with the Cardinals. And we all know it's going to be 11-23 and something else. Thor has made it very clear he does not not want to touch, for good reason, the 2025 first. Mm -hmm. I think there's a perception that, well, uh, I mean, perhaps they could throw in Jefferson because he's not signed yet and we don't know where that's going. But I've said, why why are the Cardinals going to take, I I mean, he's a great player, don't get me wrong, but why are the Cardinals going to take on a, a new huge contract when you can draft one? So here's my question. Cardinals say, we need 11, we need 23, and Jordan Addison which is why I asked you about where a guy like Baker would fit. Like, cause he's, it, cause if he's a clear three, you don't have a clear two. Would you guys consider and, or do 11, 23 and your 2023 first round pick? I wouldn't for one, because I feel like from a cap standpoint, you've already got like a lot of money sunk into Jordan Addison here. And it, it's, it wouldn't wreck your franchise either way. But you've already the thing about Addison, he's on a rookie contract for for three or four more years. So you've already sort of got this really valuable piece. And if you're if you're the to me, if you're the Cardinals, I get what you're saying because the Cardinals want the rookie scale contract. That's sort of their stance. Like, hey, we love Justin Jefferson, but we'd rather just draft Marvin Harrison Jr. and pay him almost nothing versus thirty five million dollars. So Addison kind of fits that need for them. Right. But the Vikings also need pieces like Addison that are very cost effective for the next few years. So I would, um, I don't know, I'd almost rather kick them like, because I'd rather kick them like an extra fourth round pick so that they can go get, you know, Javon Baker and say, hey, you guys want to go get a wide, you're not going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. So go get Javon Baker, go get a receiver at 11 and another one at, you know, 108 or something. I personally would probably not do that. Thor? (laughs) These, you know, it's always hard to exactly gauge what an NFL player's trade value is, but I I think it's easier to get there with a guy like Addison than it is with Jefferson, because then you have to start baking in the 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 contract that you're about to give and then the Mm -hmm. percentage of the cap. So it becomes more three dimensional chess with that. As Phil mentioned, Addison has myriad years left on his rookie contract, obviously is a good value with that. And we saw him last year. I think you can more or less ballpark what his trade value would be. Well, let's just toss him into this receiver class. He wouldn't be one of the first three taken. Pretty sure he'd be the fourth. Um, I mean, him against Brian Thomas, but like we already saw Jordan Addison do it in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So I think his trade value would be a little bit above, for instance, where Brian Thomas is being slotted, which is 15th. Let's just call it the 13th pick. Jordan wow. Addison is worth the 13th pick of this draft. At that point, 11, 23, and 13, you add up that on the Rich Hill trade chart, that would be 939 points. Cardinals fourth pick is 491. I realize some charts are a little bit different, but I, I feel like that would be an overpay. Uh, if we're, so if, you'd, you'd, keep the, you'd keep one of your first round picks in that instance, right? I mean, you would, it'd be Addison plus, I mean, do the math on the 11 or the 23, and you'd keep one of your first round picks. Yeah. I mean, like the Cardinals right now have what the worst receiving core in the NFL or one of the two or three worst. Like, if, if you were to tell the Cardinals, like, you know, where do you, like, how did they value Addison? I, I think they would agree with me. I, I think it would, you know, probably a little bit ahead of Brian Thomas. You know, Brian Thomas has more athleticism and stuff, but one year wonder at LSU. You don't know going to the NFL what the transition is going to be, certainly as the ceiling. But again, I, I think that they would more or less agree with that. So I, I think at that point, you're essentially giving up three top 23 picks qualitatively for number four. And I, I just think that would be an overpay. Even yeah. at number three, you know, we changed that. You're still, you know, the third pick in this thing, 514 points against that 939. Of course, you have to overpay, but I just feel like getting Addison involved into that with the two first round picks, I feel like you have shot way over the Kelly Blue Book. So I'm glad you did the math. That was sort of my sense. So to, to answer Judd's question, if it were Addison and the 11 or Addison and the 23, and I get to keep, I get to draft my quarterback at four and keep a first round pick and keep the 2025 first round pick. Now we're talking. Yeah. The, you know, let's say, you know, same way to judge Addison, I, you know, I'm just tossing out 13. I feel like that is fair. You know, as, yeah. as far, you know, if, if it was that, He's established, and, yeah. Established, yeah. You, you do that and you do 23. So Addison and 23, that would be 581 points in this way I'm doing it. The third pick is 514, but of course you have to pay an overage. The fourth pick, 491. 
that overage is more or less, you know, when people say the quarterback tax, you're getting really close to that. So I feel like, you know, if you want to talk about an Addison offer into that, Addison in 23 for number four, I feel like that would be fair. I'm not, you know, necessarily advocating for that, but I think mm -hmm. in terms of just the value, I feel like that jives. Sounds like you're tempted. Sounds like you're tempted. You might not be advocating, but you want to keep that 25 first. I do want to keep that 2025 first. Yeah. No, that's that. I think we I think we we got there. Hey, OK, um, before we get into some of your other sleepers here and before we get into a mock draft simulation, a shout out to our friends at Nicolay Law, gentlemen. Nicolay Law is the exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily here. They know that when you or a loved one gets hurt. Ordinary life can come to a stop. Things can get complicated. And during that time, insurance companies are vultures. They're likely to pressure you. They don't care if you get better. But Nicolay Law cares. And they've seen every play the insurance companies have to run. They'll go the whole nine yards to make sure you get the compensation you deserve after an accident. Get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers, Nicolay, at NicolayLaw.com. Or give them a call at one 855 nicolay you see their billboards all over, um, fun commercials everywhere. So uh, we we're proud to have them on board here at Purple Daily. Also, if you're a business owner out there, and we know that there's a lot of you business owners that consume Purple Daily on a regular basis, do you have the game plan in place to stay focused on safety and preventing claims against your business? Federated Insurance comes in to support your business and offer a customizable lineup of industry-specific coverages and risk management services to help you continue your winning streak as a business owner. At Federated Mutual Insurance Company, it's our business to protect yours, and you can find out more at federatedinsurance.com. Okay, give us a couple running backs that you like, because the Vikings, I mean, they, they're they not desperate anymore. They got Ty Chandler, Aaron Jones, but I could see them sniffing around, especially now with the new kick return format too. Could they be looking for someone that could maybe help in that regard? So give us a couple running backs that uh, that may stand out to you on day three. Yeah, a couple guys for sure are going to go day three, and for sure are going to be at the Vi around the price point of when the Vikings I think could consider drafting a running back somewhere in the middle of day three. First one we talked a little bit about on the last episode because we we took him in the mock draft. Tyrone Tracy Jr. from Purdue via Iowa, former Iowa receiver, spent four years there. Uh, the Iowa passing offense, we won't get into that, but then he transfers to Purdue. Iowa had previously tried to talk Tracy into uh, trying to transition to running back. He, he sort of balked at it there. Purdue's coaching staff was able to effectively convince him of that. Last year, he blew up. Tyron Tracy did. 88 PFF grade, 163.5 elusive rating. 100 is, is considered solid. 4.44 mm. yards after contact per attempt. Those two numbers, the last two I said, both the highest of my top 30 running backs in this wow. class. And keep in mind, Tracy, brand new to the running back position and was on this dead-end Purdue team that was facing all these good defensive fronts. Yeah. Uh, Tracy, bouncy, juiced up, wide base slasher, better vision and instincts than expected when looking at his oh, running oh, back tape. Yeah. Uh, runs with tempo, has a knack for time, timing cutback lanes to free himself into open grass. And Phil, to your point, I saw some of this stuff, and, and they tried him at uh, returner last year, too. He, he ran one back to the house. I don't know why Iowa was not doing that with Tyrone Tracy Jr., an incredibly gifted athlete, 5'11", 209, 9.77 Raz with 448 wheels. But you saw both with him as a, the, the kick returner, period, but also just his game as a runner. I think that transitions very well to the NFL's new kickoff rules, where it becomes this sort of like stretched out zone running play. Yeah. That's just what he does. He he just has that sense for getting himself into open space. And then he's got the Jets. So I feel like you would both get the developmental running back on a discount. Again, brand new to, to the running back position. And he's also 24, which is a part of the reason that his price point will be depressed. But a guy that potentially Aaron Jones stays here one year, if he ends up leaving in free agency, Tracy might have shown you enough in that year where he could be the starter after that. Certainly initially, he can at least be a change of pace guy there. And he could come in immediately and start returning kicks for you, if nothing else. Only 259 scrimmage touches in college. So even though he's on the older end, he comes into the NFL fresh. I think he's a super intriguing sleeper. You mentioned the zone run blocking schemes with this new kickoff format. It's going to be really interesting to see how creative the special teams coordinators, maybe even working with offensive coordinators, get. Because you, could, I was talking to Alex Boone and Jeremiah Cyril's about this a week or two ago, just getting like 
their offensive line perspective. And they're like, dude, you're with these kickoffs because it's 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 more like a, an actual football play than the old kickoff because they have kind of like a line of scrimmage zone. So you might see zone schemes. You might even see like power schemes where they're running like duo and pulling guys. It's going to be and, you might and you're see the be, flying V for mighty. You Dust. might. <laughs> you might. I like so that. It's gonna be fun. Give us your other running back. The other one, Kamani Vidal of Troy, uh, who is starting to now get the the a little bit of the the hype out on Twitter from from some of these bigger accounts. Uh, Kamani Vidal, a guy I've been pounding the table for since back in Mobile um, at the Senior Bowl. I, I got to talk to him down there, but he's got the bowling ball build, five foot eight, two thirteen, eight eight one Raz. Mm. I compare him to Jalen Warren, which is a comparison I got to ask him. Like, what do you think about my comp? He's like, I could see that. But he, Kamani Vidal tested better than Jalen Warren. He he has the speed that Jalen Warren did not display. But the commonality between the two, very similar uh, builds with the bowling ball build. And then Jalen Warren, his last season at Oklahoma State, was number two in the FBS in force missed tackles. Last year at Troy, Kamani Vidal was number two in the FBS in force missed tackles. Kamani Vidal also, importantly, but something that goes under the radar generally when, when we're talking about these kind of prospects, tremendous pass blocker. I'm talking tremendous pass block. That's huge in this system too. Yeah. yeah. Probably the best pass blocking running back in this class. And you don't have to take my word for it. Jim Nagy, the czar of the senior ball, former NFL scout evaluator. That's his opinion as well. And Kamani talked to me, like when I was interviewing him down there, I was like, what do you want to show evaluators that you, you know, part of your game that you think gets slept on. And he was like, down here, I want to show them that I'm a good receiver. Because in our system, the running backs weren't deployed as much out of that. He had he had around 20 catches all four seasons on campus, but it wasn't like every single passing concept you go out. At Troy, if you're going to stay on the field as a running back on passing downs, you have to pass block. They use Vidal as the bell cow running back, so that's where all of his touches came. Last year, he had over 300 touches. And by the way, beat stack boxes against really good competition. I know he's coming from Troy, but they played Kansas State one game, and Kansas State finally was like, oh, we're not letting that guy do damage to us anymore. Started stacking the box, eight guys. And then Vidal was blowing through and then running away from people in the open field. He, he gave them all kinds of problems. Uh, but yeah, I, I just think that that's what you're getting with him. He is, He's developed that pass block. You think he crushes guys. Like they think they're going to run over him like a bug. And then Vidal gets low with the wide base and takes their hips out. He'll yeah. flip guys over. He'll stone them into the ground. Like he has more putting people on the ground pancakes than any other running back film, you know, as far as the pass brawl. Oh, but you're also getting that running utility and more receiving utility, I think, than, than he's given credit for. So if, if you draft a guy like this, you can probably, you probably don't need your fullback then, right? <sighs> Um, I don't know if CJ Ham's listening right now, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, they, CJ, they I love you, but you sounds like a guy like this takes your place. Yeah, I mean, you could, I mean, Vidal when he steps into the NFL immediately is going to be one of the best pass blocking running backs in the NFL. I'll, I'll put yeah. it that way. He's definitely the best one in this class. Interesting. Yeah, and that's something. I mean, they've had a hard time even with like veteran Alex Madison was not great in in the pass catching third down. Uh, pass pro. I mean, that's CJ Ham. CJ Ham is the best. Aaron Jones is here now, but and Cam Akers. You know, we didn't, didn't get much of a sample size, but they need they need help with this. So wow, that let's do this, Thor. I know you've got some other. Let's we can stretch out the sleepers to to another episode too. Well, so let's we're gonna go skill position sleepers right there for day three. We're gonna put a wrap on that. Next week, let's continue with your offensive sleepers in the trenches. The Vikings need some interior offensive line help. You're going to give us some of those names next week. And then maybe in a couple of weeks, we can get to the defensive. So we'll just like, let's do, we'll mix in sleepers in the three weeks leading up to the draft here. All right. Done. Uh, because we got to make room in the last 10 minutes for a mock draft yes. simulation, gentlemen, where I want a mock. mock. We will pull up the PFF simulation page presented today by our friends who are helping us support the draft party at the Fillmore on April 25th, Minneapolis. It is sold out. And uh, we are, first of all, we're just thankful that you guys packed a bigger venue than we've had in the first two years. We're also now thinking maybe we need an even bigger venue for 2025. If they have a first round pick in 2025. Uh, but if you're coming in, maybe from out of town or maybe from deep into the suburbs, We've partnered with Element Hotel right above the Fillmore for a 15% room rate discount. Go to scornorth.com slash hotel to get your discounted hotel 
And uh, it's valid, by the way, from April 25th through the 28th. So you can get multiple nights with that 15% room rate discount at Element Hotel. Everybody that shows up is going to get a purple daily flag courtesy of Popped Corn of Minnetonka. And the VIPs at the draft party will get a Popped Corn sample bag as well here. Uh, boys, here are the parameters for this particular mock draft simulation. We're going to go Vikings have to stick at 11 or trade back. So no trading up in this simulation. We'll go five yep. rounds for time purposes. This will be kind of a speed mock. But I'm going to start this up here. Thor, you get to make final decisions. Just quickly, if the if if this drops J.J. McCarthy to 11, I think PFF goes back on permanent probation. <laughs> Do you think? Do you think? I mean, I, I, you don't think I, there's any chance one of these guys falls to 11? I I think there's a very slim chance. I, I think PFF is fighting for their life right now with us. <laughs> well, let's let's click start draft and see what That's happens. That's what I think. We'll see if they've improved it at all since the last time. All right, let's go. Caleb Williams, number one. Jaden Daniels, number two. J.J. McCarthy, third oh, wow. to the Patriots. Okay, now we're cooking. Isn't that a change from the begin two months ago? Thor got Marvin cool. Harrison, Jr., <laughs> Roma Dunze to the Chargers. Drake May to the Giants. Oh, I'm just going to pause this real uh, quick. Oh. So this is a plausible scenario where four mm -hmm. quarterbacks come off the board in the top six picks. It is. And the Vikings get frozen out. Now, people are going to rip them for, why didn't you give up? The, uh, why don't you be aggressive here? And maybe that's a fair criticism. But this is a plausible scenario, boys, where, hey, these top three teams freeze everyone out. And then the Giants either trade up or, or find their guy at six. So... Before I click play on the seven, eight, nine, ten picks, what should the Vikings be thinking in their war room right now if this happens? Well, yeah, they would be frustrated because you know, ostensibly in this scenario, they are have engaged with the Cardinals, they have engaged with the Chargers, and for whatever reason, could not consummate a trade, which allows the fourth quarterback to drop right into the Giants' lap. Which I I totally buy that the Giants would take the fourth. Like people are like, oh, they're just posturing. Like they just, I I don't think so. Um, and the reason why, of course, their their quarterbacks stink. But more topically, to this point. Daniel Jones, who you have to carry this year, you cannot cut him for salary cap reasons. Like the acceleration of the dead cap, they wouldn't be able to field the team. So they yeah. have to keep him on the roster this year. But where the rubber meets the road is one off season from now, they are able to move on. I think it's only a $10 million uh, cap yeah. hit to release him. But only if he is healthy at that time, if he has <laughs> suffered an injury, a like season ending, whatever, and then he is not healthy at that time. If he is on the roster past X date, I don't have it on the top of my head in next off season his salary becomes guaranteed for the next year. So now they are stuck with Daniel Jones again. Whole upshot being, I Don't think the him. Giants Don't not only him. incentivize to get the quarterback of the future, but yeah. get someone where there would be a plausible excuse to nail Daniel Jones to the bench next year like the Broncos did with Russell Wilson yep. last year to make that. sure that no more guaranteed money vests. God, I love this business. It's Amen. so nasty and so great. But it's 100% what they're talking so, about right now. So uh, I think right now, if this if this were to, to take place, I think it's panics. Okay, so here's what here's so we're on the clock now. Like just guessing what the so, Vikings would think. Well, but let's talk through this. Okay, so Dallas Turner to the Titans, Joe Alt, Malik Neighbors, and then Olu Fashanu to the Jets. So we could do one of two things here, boys. We could either stick and take a quarterback, but we also have the protection of the twenty third pick behind us. My gut says you don't reach for the fifth quarterback at 11 here. The, you don't compound, a, like, the problem being you didn't get into the top six picks. I don't know, Thor, I, I mean, you guys fight me on this, but I would I would probably look to trade back here and pick a non-quarterback. I That's... Where I'm, that's where I'm going. Yeah, we're definitely not taking a quarterback. That that's where you get into the ponder thing of like, oh, we yes. wanted the quarterback. We got shut out of the ones we wanted. So let's just take the next guy with it. You can't do it here. And I don't even think at 23, you know, like I said, that you know, I would trade down maybe there if that's their conviction in Penix that they can fit him into KOC system. But it's got to be either the very end of the first or the top of the second, or or we got to go. You just can't overpay for for the asset with this pick here. Um, the only thing I, I'd want to look at. Phil, really quick, was the offensive uh, linemen that were still there? And then the uh, – um, I'd also like to take a look at the – Here's the board for you, Thor. Yeah. Are you good on time here, by the way? I'm good. Are you good? Okay, I'm okay. Good. Yeah, um, you toss those offensive linemen up for me. I just wanted to see which one had fallen down. Did you say only Alton Fashanu went? 
Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, Fashanu and Joe Alt are off the board. Let okay. me pull up the other tackles just so you can see. Yeah. So Fuaga is still out there, and then Fautanu from Washington, J.C. Oh. Latham. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. So you got some interesting names there. At this pick, you can't take one of the interior defensive linemen. Those would be a little bit, you know, uh, eight, nine picks from now where Murphy and Newton for me would come into play. And then the cornerbacks, I don't know if I would use this, you know, qualitatively value wise. I don't know if for me, no cornerback is going to be 11 or above on my board. The one thing I could see with the stick and pick at 11, when it's not the quarterback, you're stuck in that position is taking the guy with the, the right tackle projection, who we absolutely know is if he goes to guard is going to be a stud guard immediately. In that scenario, then you take care of one of your guard starting spots. Now, Brandle and uh, Ingram are fighting for the other one. Whoever loses that becomes a good backup. And now you have the you have the depth at every position because if O'Neal or Derrissaw get injured, you kick the rookie out to tackle, and yeah. then you can have Brandle go in or Ingram, who are, like I said, whoever loses that one. But I think value wise, that would be the only thing that makes sense here. So you know, it'd be a guy like Fuaga, uh, potentially Latham. Um, but yeah, I'd probably look to, to trade down at this point. So if you can't trade down, then do, do that. We've got two teams here, according to the PFF simulator that are interested in talking trade the dolphins with the 21st pick and the Ravens with the 30th pick. Should okay. we see what the, what the dolphins let's see want what to the talk dolphins. About? Yeah, let's do that. So we have to facilitate the trade here. So we'll go to, uh, we'll swap the 21, the 11, and then would they kick in the 55? It yeah. says they would kick in the 55 to move up 10 spots. So on the uh, oh man on on Rich Hill that it's pretty close. Uh, uh, Vikings uh, send out three hundred fifty eight points. Dolphins send out three sixty two. But we got to make them pay the tax that everyone wants the Vikings to pay when they'd we kick in one fifty. Go up. They'd kick in one fifty eight too for sure. Or next year's. What if it was like next year's third? Yeah, see, they would do next year's third. What about with, second? Next year's second is a fifty fifty. Oh. My, let's what if we, and, then we'll, and, then we'll, and then we'll kick in what if to sweeten it we'll kick in the 167 the 157 let's look just to I'm make okay it with that. yeah I'm like, okay, okay with we'll that. offer this trade it's accepted okay. boys yeah. wow wow no problem. look at that yeah okay so we just traded back we have we now have the 21st and 23rd picks People are losing their minds at the yeah, Fillmore on you, April 24th. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a very real chance that uh, you're that this is not a good thing. We're gonna resume we'll here. I don't know. Thor and I are thinking with our heads here, not our hearts. Uh, yeah. I feel like Yeah, I'm thinking with my head here, and I'm thinking that the, <laughs> that this is not a great idea. Why? This is a bad idea because what you're doing is you're positioning your yourself, you're dropping down your values. And I don't trust that you're going to get the value that you think that that you are. The Vikings have, I mean, Quasi's 22 draft is built on on being cute. You don't get cute all the time. This is too cute. For sure. But uh, obviously the prerogative is a trade up. This would be that scenario where it is somehow right. unviable. Yeah. But like, I think I 11 think... still offered you the opportunity to take, take a really good talent. And now, okay, but, tra- but but all those talents are still on the board at 21 right now. And we just got an all extra. The ones oh. that were on the, am I wrong? Go back up. Yeah. Fuaga went 12. So we had yeah. a run on tackles. Brock it, Bowers to the Raiders. Troy Fautanu, Terry is, and Arnold, the cornerback run. Like, Murphy's uh, still there? Uh, no, he's uh, gone. No, I'm saying quarterbacks. Like Michael Penix is still on oh, the board right oh, now. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so as far yeah, so Murphy's off. So so Newton is the other interior defensive lineman that could go in the first round. So he would be in play here. Mm-hmm. Latu's a stud as long as the Vikings medical staff has signed off on on his his thing from a couple of years ago sure. that forced him to medically retire. But as far as on the field, past couple of years has been tremendous. Uh, uh, Cooper John from Iowa would also, I think, potentially be in play here. He would solve one of your cornerback positions going forward. Yeah. Um, and a guy that Flores, I think, would have a lot of fun moving around, put him in the slot. You could even play him at safety if you want to. And he's a, a punt returner as well. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you get Tracy later, but, you know, all the all the returning taken care of. Um, okay, and Mims is still out there. Mims would be a tougher projection, I think, to guard. Um, but I, I, I do like his upside, but I, I don't think we're taking him here. I, I think it goes between – Phil, can you pull up the, the whole cornerbacks list? Yep. yep. Let's watch Thor Cook here. That's great. There's, I mean, this is – I feel like with, with all of the tackles off the board and receivers, like positions that you don't necessarily need, it, it, there are guys here that 
at positions of need for the Vikings, cornerbacks. I'll put this one back on you, you guys. The 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 two that that intrigue me here that I'd be fine with either it's it's Coop or else it's Johnny Newton from Illinois with the interior defense line because that the that grouping of the interior defense line uh, after those top two guys we got to drop. So if this would be your opportunity to take a guy there that could come in and immediately start, but obviously Coop well, would as well. At well, we might we might get them both because we picked twenty first and twenty third. Would you? This is this and is the lots question. Lots very here. much in play, like I said, if the medicals are signed off on, but that is an unknowable thing for us. Right. The question here is: Do you take a quarterback at twenty one or twenty three, or do you take the two best defensive players on the board and then figure out quarterback later? Well, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm going the latter because I'm not overpaying. You know, as far as that goes, people are like, you know, there's a thing of like overpaying for the trade up, but yeah. overpaying for an asset by way over drafting them, it's yeah. it's just an overpay of a different name. This That's is about why to lose his mind right now. This is why this is why that and I. I I know the exercise is to stand pat or trade back. This is why you overpay to trade up. For sure. So this, yeah, this, I mean, I don't disagree. This with is that. an exercise in why you don't stand pat. I mean, but is it though? I mean, it's, like, this, this is, is getting thing. cute. It's getting but, cute, man. But I Joe, don't trust but, but, him but here's the thing. But you're saying what? But what? And again, like this, we're all doing. We're just exploring all the options here, folks. We're exploring all the options. You're saying trading, for instance, the 11, the 23, and a 2025 first round pick is not getting cute, right? That's what you're saying. If you but that if, might but that might also result in you picking the wrong quarterback and having no other right. capital to fill out your team. So, like, so the question is there's you're, like there's risk on both ends of this. There is. So the question is who do you trust the most? And the person I trust the most is O'Connell. So I'm going to get cute on his behalf before I go get cute on the scouts or quasies. What if O'Connell says JJ McCarthy or bust and the Patriots say, sorry, guys, we're drafting J.J. McCarthy at three. And they don't really love Drake May. They don't love his mechanics. They just, you know, they're just not really into him. Then you're that's then, then you'd be in this exact scenario, right? If you don't like Drake May, too. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't tend to believe that. I, I think that McCarthy. Well, actually, I, I think May is atop their board because D Daniels is probably not going to be available. Mm -hmm. But um, here's my beef. People are acting like the Vikings have the third overall pick. They oh, don't. Yeah, that's true. They have the eleventh pick, right? So, but there's, but there's ways to get up to four and five. The third is going to be tough. Four and five, I think, are doable. So, but if they wind up in this situation where they where the, the quarterbacks are just gone before the seventh pick, mm -hmm. and they have decided, sorry, I'm with Thor, man. Like, I think trading back and getting value and building your team, like, don't compound the draft going horribly for you by making a a dumb move that could cost you a great roster. Like don't, don't panic draft. Oh my God, we got to get the fifth quarterback with the 11th pick. If there's a badass defensive player sitting there, that's, that's where I'm at with this or a trade back that gets you a, a day two pick. And I keep coming back to if O'Connell likes Penix, I'm taking him. If he doesn't, that's fine, but I am going with, with him first and I am going to give myself every chance to trade up. I would rather get ripped for trading up than I would for trying to get super creative okay for so sure we... but, you can, but that was the whole point of the exercise so we, you can't rip us john yeah Jeff, oh, i'm, we, not, we I'm man, not ripping we... you guys i'm telling you what the vikings should do <laughs> you're like being a sourpuss <laughs> no i agree record. you know i agree with that <laughs> yeah yeah by the way like i agree go up if if you like one of these four guys go get him so we're mm -hmm. like we're all on the same page there but this is I would sort say of... any any of these top three guys, because you know, again, the Latu thing, it's just the medical thing, but any of those guys would be good values at, at like where we're at right now. Okay. So I'll leave let's it go, up let's to go, you guys. We'll go Jerzon Newton here. We'll okay. get the interior defensive player with the 21st pick. And then oh, man. we're back and on the clock at 23 the other, and other everyone's still, still on the board. Yeah. But but we need a quarterback. Maybe this is where your Spencer Rattler thing comes full circle. Oh, Judd hates this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phil, check out our trade offers. Uh, okay. Judd, Judd might uh, exit the show if we trade down again. But let's just see. Well, what, but if we can we get got. an extra. Okay, so the Cardinals at twenty-seven are knocking, and then the Commanders at thirty-six are knocking. So we're like, oh, we Monty could take Austin Penix with the thirty-six. You wouldn't, you wouldn't trade up. Let us trade up before, but now you want to trade up with us. Isn't that interesting? Well, so yeah, if let's we swap see these and they kick in the 66, that's a no. They kick in the 71, it's a no. What if they kick in the 35 and we kick in the 55? Yeah, I see. So we get to move up. I'm going to Oh, I like that. I like that. 
Ooh. Okay, they said no. What, what if we kick on 129? So we'd, we'd be moving up uh, 20 spots and kicking in the 129 offer. It's been accepted. Okay. It's yeah. been accepted. So, so we're okay. going to get, get two guys here in a sec. This is where we can take the quarterback with that next one. So we're back on the clock at 27, but we also have the 35th overall pick. Michael Penix is still on the board. And Judd's got, Judd's got to go in six minutes, by the way, for uh, okay. another podcast here. Um, either uh, Mims or McKinnistry. For, Phil, Phil, just go down just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those top Oodles. two guys should not be on the board, in my opinion. Mims is this mammoth human being who needs a little bit of development. But when he was on the field at Georgia, really, really good. Tested as an awesome athlete at this gargantuan size. I think the ceiling's there. Uh, Kool Aid, he's going to come in right away and be one of your starting boundary cornerbacks. Wow. So, it which one do you want? Um, Judd, do you have a preference? Cornerback Judd, or essentially a guard? I Mims. Mims so, are developing to take over a tackle spot eventually, but I, I think he could come in and play certainly as a hammer in the run game. I mean, a corner, a corner intrigues me because I'm assuming Booth is probably. I'm good with Kool Aid. Have, have worked out. Kool Aid's And by good. the way, what, what the and reason we're name. just for, for the audience, the, the reason why we're talking about Mims and McKinstry and not a quarterback is because we have the 35th pick behind this. That's our pick for the QB. That's if the Penix QB is pick. there. That one's done. Yep. So you guys, uh, let's do Kool Aid. I'm, Kool Aid McKinstry. Yes. Welcome in. Shut down cornerback. Our defense just got a whole Mike. lot better. And we're back on the clock with the 35th overall pick here. Ooh, Chop Robinson almost fell to the second round. And here's the quarterbacks. Bo Nix on the board. Michael Penix on the board. Spencer Rattler on the board at 35. Michael Penix, come on down. This Michael is where Penix. you can take Michael Penix. Okay. There you go. We're just going to – we have two picks remaining here, the 108 and the 167. I'm just going to turbo this to the 108. So we've got, we've got a DT. We've got a cornerback. We've got a quarterback. Could still use a wide receiver here. Wide receiver and and uh we didn't take the offensive lineman yet, did we? Nope. And then and then potentially edge, right? Probably be top three right now. Yep. I'll just show you the big board right. here. You can tell us what you see on well, let me see let me see the wide receivers. I was kind of curious. Yeah, it, do yeah. And if you could can you put IOL and, and edge on there too, just uh mm -hmm. so we we'll just go, we'll just bang them out real quick. Okay. Look at this, this exercise, man. This is okay, things have escalated go. here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Cooper BB would be very interesting. He he, a guy who come comes in and is probably going to win one of those two uh, starting spots um, at guard. Let's go. Should we do it? Let's do it. Yeah, okay. I, I think he's your best option here. Okay, Cooper BB, a guard from Kansas State, is on the board. And now our last pick in this exercise. It's a five round mock simulation. Is the one sixty seven. So let's let's look at uh, wide receiver, edge, and running back. Luke this McCaffrey, Luke oh guys, yeah, there's your guys right Dude, there. Sorry, this this experiment yeah. continues okay. no longer. Luke McCaffrey Run. is a Minnesota Viking. Okay, they're grading our draft here. PFF. I know Judd's grade is an F minus for this, but the PFF gives us an A minus. They keep killing so, us on McCaffrey. They're wrong for that. They hate McCaffrey. Uh, yeah, McCaffrey's going to go started. maybe fourth round. So we wind up with uh, Jerzon Newton, defensive tackle. We wind up with Kool-Aid McKinstry, a starting outside cornerback. Michael Penix Jr. Uh, to, to pair with uh, Sam Darnold in the quarterback room. And then Cooper Beebe, a starting guard. And Luke McCaffrey, a potential wide receiver three if he progresses. May have Your just gotten thoughts. five. Those first five picks might go on and start right away. Or first uh, four picks, you know, between Newton, McKinnistry, Penix, and, and Cooper BB. Mm. You might have gotten four immediate starters there. And McCaffrey, if you go to three wide receiver sets, uh, technically you'd be one yeah. too. Brian By Flores the way, Judd, this is, Penix is going right around where Jalen Hurts went in the draft, right around where mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson went in the draft. Mm -hmm. You hate this. I don't like how it got there, but like you, but like Thor said, it was part of the exercise. So yeah, yeah, I don't. Uh, th this would not be my choice, but it's not a bad draft. I'm not saying it's a bad draft. Okay, Brian like Flores is very happy right now. Sure, people is. would be. I think I think O'Connell, if he likes Penix, I think O'Connell would be if happy he likes with Penix. Yeah. So yeah. again, you get a you get a rookie scale contract quarterback in the first 35 picks. You also beef up your defense. You keep your 2025 first round pick. 
And we got let's, a let's second back for next year. Of course, you guys remember they tossed that the two seconds in with Houston. That pick then went to Buffalo in the dig yeah. straight. But Vikings in 2025 sitting without a round two pick. You have now recouped that. Yeah. So, all right, we got to go. Thor, awesome stuff, man. Fantasy pros and betting pros. And we'll uh, we'll keep chunking away at your day three sleepers throughout the next few weeks on this podcast. All right. Appreciate it, boys. Awesome. We'll see you Thank you. There he is. Great Thank stuff you. here yeah. for the sports dad. Uh, this is Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a dang Super Bowl before we die.